Unleashing the power of multi-cloud MariaDB database management. Hi there. Thanks so much for joining. Um, my name is Paul Brunier. I'm the Director of Sales Engineering here at Virtuoso. Uh, and a thank you to the MariaDB conference organizers for inviting us to talk with you today. I'm here to talk about um, MariaDB deployments, but around cloud uh, environments. There's a very brief agenda here. We're going to talk through a little bit about what this means and why people are moving into the cloud. Uh, Multi-cloud -cloud adoption is here, uh, who's doing it and why. I'm going to talk very specifically about a uh, customer use case that I'm personally uh, been working with, this particular client, uh, a large client in the finance sector, um, that have used a virtual platform to help them with their MariaDB deployments. And I'll talk a bit about what they have done and we've developed with them um, code to enable uh, a particular multi-cloud deployment of this. Now we'll get into the details about what all that means um, shortly, but I'm going to talk about what we've done uh, and then I'm going to give you a demo of um, uh, our platform and then we'll end up with um, um, a Q&A session, hopefully we've got enough time. First of all, databases do actually keep moving to the cloud. Um, anybody that's worked with um, database systems for a while um, will probably have started with deployments on-prem, onto um, you know, uh, local devices, servers, and so on and so forth. We can see from the chart here that Gartner is actually charting the rise, okay, rise of revenue, but it's a rise really of databases being deployed uh, into cloud environments. Now, we could say, well, what do you mean by cloud environment? And we'll get on to a little bit about that. Um, overall, the takeouts from this is that uh, cloud services, sorry, database services are growing, but specifically database deployments on cloud are growing a little bit higher than database deployments on premise as well. Um, the good news for all of us is that database usage and therefore deployment is growing overall. So that's, you know, that's a good thing for us. Um, but databases in the cloud, there's a number of reasons. I'll just touch on very briefly um, some of these here. One is about innovation. Um, databases, MariaDB, uh, new wave of services, we tend to associate those with sort of uh, cloud operations and uh, cloud services, cloud applications and so on. Innovation is one of the drivers for organizations looking to place database services into cloud platforms and cloud environments. Um, security is another factor. It's a big driver for um, um, basically every organization, but specifically a number of organizations are uh, coupling, if you will, pairing security and enhanced security, a new wave of security with cloud-based services as well. That's another driver. Cost efficiency. This one's an interesting one. Anybody that's been using cloud for a while, probably thinks actually cloud isn't always cheaper and it's not is it more cost effective it can be and the true answer to that question is it depends it depends upon so many factors we're not going into that today but the use of cloud can deliver cost efficiencies you know time savings operational savings and so on Scalability tends to be one of the uh, cornerstones of operating with cloud services is that it's can be viewed as limitless, not really, but it's that whole premise that there's a resource on tap which helps any environment when it needs to scale and flex in different directions. So scalability is key. Reduced lock-in from having one single platform environment on premise. I mean, again, I think this is a moot point, but when we get into a discussion about multi-cloud operations, this is where we're not necessarily tied into one specific cloud provider. We'll talk about that as we go on. And then uh, people's fears about migrations. These days I suggest no. Um, it's a mature way that we look at the market now and um, there's lots of migration tools and lots of knowledge about migrations, uh, migrating uh, virtual instances, database, uh, content, etc. from one location to another location. So it's much less of a concern now. And if anything, it's an enabler to help people because it's maturing to help people move to consume database services from cloud operations. Um, now, the multi-cloud adoption. Um, so, um, a chart here from um, Flexera. Um, you may be familiar with their state of the cloud reports. They publish them every year, have done for many, many years. Um, they're basically saying that um, in terms of cloud adoption, 87% of organizations 
um, that they canvas using cloud, using actually multiple clouds. I've uh, read a statistic recently that talks about enterprises are using on average 3.8 clouds. Now, are those clouds, um, you know, hyperscalers, public clouds, are they private clouds? Well, it's a mixture. And again, uh, Flexera have extrapolated the, these, these figures out, say 72% of all multi-cloud adoptions using a hybrid model, that is private and public. It could be a mixture of on-premise clouds, it could be a mixture of public clouds from hyperscalers or taken from any cloud service provider. The point is, multi-cloud is here, it's all around us and we are working within these environments. There's many reasons why organizations are using such multi-cloud architectures and there's a few details here, I'm not going to go through all of these, but it comes down to lots of business drivers. Um, we're using multiple clouds because uh, we have applications siloed in different clouds or apps have been developed from one cloud or another cloud or they're suited to one cloud. Many, many reasons. We're not going into those. And yourselves, you'll have reasons for this. Or if you're a service provider, databases, then your clients will have many, many reasons for all of these as well. Um, there's pros and cons to doing all of this. We look to embrace multiple clouds because we get different benefits from them, surely. Well, this is, this is true. Um, we're not going into the differences. What, what's the difference between AWS database uh, services and Google and so on? You know, we don't have to be as as, as simple as that. It, fundamentally, for me, it gives organisations and you know developers, DPAs, whatever, it gives more more choice. You've got more leverage there. You can reduce risk for sure. But any time that you introduce multiple of anything, you can introduce complexity. So we've got to be mindful of this as well. You know, management, governance. Um, various points at the bottom of the screen, data dispersion. If you have data elements, data sets, different physical cloud locations, physical cloud, um, how do you best manage those? Um, we can talk about that as we go on. You know, we have some ideas, this is a virtuoso, have some options and solutions for this. So why, why am I here and what do virtuoso do that could potentially um, help or be of interest to yourselves? We have um, a software platform, we call it the Virtuoso Application Platform, and the easiest way to describe it is as a PaaS solution to enable you to build your own cloud services with. So uh, private organizations um, take our software and they build their own cloud with it, and it can be private, it can be public. Um, a lot of our customers are service providers and they take our VAP software, Virtuoso Application Platform, and they use that to build their own application focused cloud services. Now VAP can run pretty much anywhere, bare metal, infrastructure as a service, um, it can run on those cloud platforms you can see at the bottom, OpenStack, AWS, um, VMware and so on. It can run on all of these, but what it gives you is an application focus, a DevOps if you will, enables uh, environments to help you manage application services. Now, we're here to talk about, this is MariaDB conference, we're talking about databases. Databases for us is a subset of that overall, if you will, application enablement or anything as a service capability that we have. So we'll talk about that. We have a number of, um, we can use the word pre-configured database, but these are database environments supported specifically by Virtuoso in our application platform cloud. MariaDB is there, there's a few others out there as well. And when I say that we're pre-configured and we support them, we have templates. We also basically have various configuration elements, um, if you're pre-baked, to make it easier for you to deploy um, MariaDB environments. Now, anybody, and I'm assuming that most people here, um, very much used to setting up MariaDB databases, you know, clusters manually. There's a number of steps you go through. And we've got a picture of this, uh, you know, poor old DBA here, um, you know, head in hands because I've got to go through steps. It's a little bit complex. What we do very briefly is we just simplify this for you, we make it easier for you to uh, manage, deploy, um, deploy and manage uh, MariaDB databases. And when I say that, we have uh, elements templatized, so you can literally two clicks deploy a DB uh, cluster. But we've also got smart terminal software that enables these to automatically scale horizontally, vertically as well. Uh, we can have all these clustered. We're going to get onto some of the topologies later on. But the point that I'm trying to get across is that we um, have a tools in build that enable easier management. So we do a lot of the heavy lifting. 
and you can do more of your database design, whatever it is you, you have to do as well. So I want to bring this into, if you like, uh, the real, you know, real world uh, by talking about a specific use case. This is a national bank. Um, it's, it's, it's not in Finland. It's not in Europe, in fact, but it's a customer I deal with in Thailand. It's a major, major national bank. I work with these, uh, with this bank for um, the best part of two years now. Um, they came up with a requirement that they were looking to develop their own database as a service to run as a private cloud for their internal customers. So the database uh, uh, management systems they were using and they wanted to focus on MariaDB, also some PostgreSQL and Redis in there as well. But they specifically wanted to be able to deploy these to operate across three separate data center locations. They wanted clustered and they wanted multi-region operations. So we were doing clustered databases, but pretty much, you know, primary, 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 secondary, uh, as in as in topology deployments. So we had to get into development uh, phase with this to validate um, or ensure that we could validate that we could meet the, uh, the bank's requirements. Um, this is a little bit of a busy diagram from the customer. Um, talking about their three different data center locations. And these are all in three different cities. Well, one in city, which is a major city, capital, and, and one elsewhere. But they had uh, basically a primary data center. This is a block in green, uh, BBT. That's not going to details, doesn't matter. A secondary data center, and they wanted active, active loads between the data centers, and then a failover of DR data center. So they managed all the networks, high speed network between them and they wanted us to develop or to deploy database as a service cloud for only a db that operated primary primary failover but they could operate from any of these three three centers and so what they were asking for was a multi-region cluster database solution for maria db as well as uh, postgres sql and redis now we started this particular initiative in june last year um, the first go live was September, the second go live was November, and they've been enhancing the system through into this year and adding more and more smarts into it. <coughs> Excuse me. The software development was needed, so it was access to devs and DBAs from our side and also dev DBAs from their side as well. And actually tying these two together when there was roughly a five hour time difference between our development centers and where they were was, was interesting, and also language as well. Um, then networks. Now this was this proved to be a real sort of a key area where we had to put a lot of focus on the customer that did as well. So we found even though the networks were supposed to be identical between these three data center locations, they had very different performance characteristics, different latency, and um, delivery times. Oh, that caused us some 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 interesting. So much so we'd introduce several weeks delays into the project where the customer had to get in, special network specialist to perform third-party assessment on some of their network operations. And sure enough, they uncovered some problems and they rectified them. It all took time. What we did is we needed to build our own dev test platform, which mirrored what the customer was deploying as well. So we had to do investment in that to mirror as closely as we could what the customer was doing, but that's fine. And they also said they wanted to do very thorough and rigorous performance testing with all of these, and they wanted us to prove that a database operating in one of their data centers was actually equal to operating anywhere. So they wanted us to validate this. <coughs> they wanted to go through a whole whole raft of uh, performance tests, which is fine. So we settled and we recommended using Sysbench. Um, probably most people here have used this. Uh, just a sort of screen grab there. Uh, but what we found, and probably no surprise, a multi-region deployment significant or can impact performance so it's going to have latency but where you've got primary primary where you've got workloads um, being initiated on different regions and obviously updates are traveling across to other um, areas you know of the organization the whole topology there it's going to give interesting performance results but we use this bench to actually um, engineer in uh, if you were checks and balances from our side to make sure that this was actually um, operationally working and that kind of thing. Um, the customer wanted to read this, um, uh, they wanted a repeatable method to actually test and validate it themselves as they went forward and deployed more applications into it. So we ended up actually teaching the um, you know, the customer about how to use this bench. So 
terms of different topologies. So these are the different topologies we support, and they also asked us to do the multi-region deployment, but they wanted a primary-primary approach um, to this as well. So standard Maria DB topologies or primary 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 secondary galera, uh, that's what we support, and this is part and parcel of our platform where you can just choose drop down menu, I want to deploy Maria DB with this topology and it will go and automatically configure all the load balances and so on. So that is part of what I was saying about we do the heavy lifting for you um, for deployment of these. Now they also want a multi-region deployment. Uh, multi-region cluster and this is what we actually built for them where <clears throat> excuse me um, and there's a little cut out of a dialog box uh, here where the customer can select multiple regions to deploy the particular elements in primary primary and secondary deployment so we did this as three ways that's what the customer asked for so um, Maria multi-region for us is basically clustering the database with primary, primary, secondary, but across different physical locations. So we've got region A, region B, region C, these different data centers. And so we ended up with deploying multiple, <laughs> multiple of these actually. Uh, we started off by deploying um, um, this is a private cloud for their internal customers, but then they actually wanted this repeating a subsequent phase to develop their own to develop their own public cloud. So using MariaDB, again, same construct, so primary, primary, secondary, basically resiliency, fault tolerance built in to be able to sell that service. And I think they pulled their first uh, paying customer on in Q2 this year. So again, that was very interesting. But in terms of this as a diagram, we talk about regions here, but these are different clouds. And when we have deployed VAP, we call, we refer to VAP being the cloud. VAP can sit on any platform, uh, pretty much as I explained earlier. This so happens that it's on-prem, on, on um, physical platforms that the customer provided. But we can deploy this on customers, OpenStack, VMware, AWS, so we can have AWS here and GCP there and on-premise there and VMware and OpenStack. And to us, they're just multiple regions. They're part of a multi-cloud strategy where we actually put an abstraction there of, uh, if you will, software that helps you deploy your database architecture across all of these clouds. So this is where the multi-cloud element comes in. Very interesting one, I believe it is. Best practices, what do we learn? Never make assumptions about data, database requirements. Obviously, really, the customer, by the way, was looking at AWS as an option, um, and they realised they would have to learn a completely different way of dealing with um, databases, which they didn't feel comfortable with that at all. Um, the key uh, to document everything um, when you. Uh, learn something, hear something, get some requirements from the customer, document it, echo it back to them. I know it's, this is kind of really sort of basic stuff, but this is what kind of works. We had to work this way. Network operations, this is probably the key point. We have to understand how the network operated and what performance was expected, what people get with it. We have to do tests of their network and make sure that it was satisfied. It satisfied us and our DBAs that yes, their network is consistent, it's reliable, it's performance and so on and so forth. Customer expectations I put there can be significantly impacted by the network. Yes, it can. So important testing, as I said earlier, agree upfront what sort of you're going to use, make sure you know how to use it, make sure the customer knows how to use it as well. So Sysbench um, tends to be the most widely accepted tool there. And um, we're going to make sure as well. It sounds so obvious, but when the customer's got multiple data center locations, different data centers, make sure that the um, architectures they're deploying on are the same. Or if not, that the customer understands that there's a complete difference in overall performance, you know, MVMEs to SSDs, spinning disk, what's the network topology in the local data center? Are we talking 10 to be 5, 4 to give whatever, so on and so forth. Now, you know, probably you know, we're all te technical people in the room, so I'm sure we're okay with that. But we had to go through that process as well. The customer also insisted on whenever we got the code, Ready because we released it in you know um, various sprints. We did three we do three week sprints uh, to develop it and deploy. And they wanted to go into POC environments. So we built a POC environment and uh, made sure that they were com uh, comfortable and happy with that and so on. So POC acceptance criteria document absolutely key. But use that use that as a working document to go through checks and balances with the customer. Really really important. Um, so overall, what we have is a um, 
a streamlined uh, DBAS deployment and management platform with our virtualized application platform. Now, it's it's a uh, you can call it a general application platform, you know, turnkey pass solution. But we've got some smarts in there relative to database deployments as well as some other uh, applications, WordPress, Magento, and so on, which I don't feature here. But our platform is all about helping you um, run your database environments helping you uh, with fast and easy deployment, fast and easy uh, configuration and reconfiguration as well. So inbuilt high availability, make sure the performance with um, resource usage as and when you need it. So if you want dynamic resource uh, balancing with, you know, we have this elastic engine under the covers and so on that can help optimize costs and so on. The point about that is that this is an enabler to help you manage your MariaDB environments, deployments um, that bit easier, hopefully. You agree. So, right now, I'm going to go um, to a demo. I'll just talk about database as a service, database platform as a service, because uh, our platform <laughs> software can be deployed in either scenario. If you want to take our software and install it yourself in your data center, that's fine. And then use that hosted, you know, on your own um, infrastructure and services, that's absolutely fine. If you wanted to actually take this as a service, that's absolutely fine as well, because a number of our service provider organizations, they offer services where you can just take a database service from them. So from us, Either model is fine. We simply provide the software, however you choose to use it, either use it directly yourself in your data center or take service from a service provider. Absolutely fine. It's the same software and you get the same benefits from it. Okay, so I'm going to go into um, a demo now. I've talked about this long enough. Hopefully that actually um, gives you a good insight into what we are and what, what we've been doing. Right, so I'm just at the log on screen now for the uh, demo of this particular uh, environment. So we'll log on uh, into the Virtuoso application platform. And um, when you see the screen, um, it comes up and it gives me a list of the active um, applications that I have uh, live at the moment in time. As you can see, I've just got one here, which is a uh, MariaDB cluster, and that's comprised of a number of different components. We're going to come back and have a look at that in a moment. That's just the version that I've already had created. But I'm going to show you uh, a little bit around this um, environment um, with a view to then creating um, our own MariaDB um, cluster. Then I'm going to actually show you how to create uh, one across multiple clouds as well. So. Um, Really simple information, a few menu items at the top, new environment, we can import uh, applications code, we can uh, have a look at the marketplace. There's some settings over here uh, where we can set up things like two-factor authentication, change password, establish access tokens, SSH keys, and so on. We've got an interesting collaboration feature here as well. Um, so that when one person, for example, sets up a particular database environment, they can share, collaborate, with, with others, with their colleagues, and so on. So you can share administration duties around the environment as well. Similarly, other people can share uh, their application stacks and their database services that they've created with you, for you to uh, help administer as well. So um, there's a number of activities there we can do in sort of the you know, initial settings. We've got a, um, a whole heap of help activities all built into this particular platform. So you can contact support, have a look at the documentation, um, have a look at how to um, uh, set up and use APIs, CLIs, you've got videos, tutorials, you know, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of help and uh, information available um, at your fingertips with this particular platform. So what I'm going to do is just go through the mechanics of showing you how to create a new MariaDB environment. So we click on new environment and then we get this environment, if you will, topology wizard set up. Now um, you can see along the top we've got various types of environment. We can go with Java, PHP, Ruby.net, etc, etc. By default um, it'll come up with, for example, PHP with an Apache server. Um, so this diagram on the left hand side, this is where you can actually build an application stack. So you can build application servers, you can have load balancers and so on from sending a database. But we're going to deselect that and we're just going to focus on MariaDB. Um, so this is a framework that allows us to build an application stack with many elements in it. But for this demo right now, we're going to focus on MariaDB. So I'm going to select MariaDB and if we just 
uh, hold, um, press that share on there, you can see we've got lots of different versions that we manage. So Virtuoto managed to create these within the platform. And then as and when new versions come available, we test validate, we add them in, that all happens in the background automatically. Let's go with the latest version, that's fine. And um, the way this works is, right, I'm selecting one particular node um, that is going to be my MariaDB database. Now, um, at, at the top of this, you can see that we allocate resources, basically memory and CPU, in terms of what we call a cloudlet. So a cloudlet is a small piece of uh, RAM, basically 128 meg, and it's 400 gigahertz of CPU, so it's a slice of a CPU. Um, MariaDB needs a little bit more than that to get going, so by default we set MariaDB is needing four cloudlets. Now, over here this box, you can see this is a scaling limit. You can hover over all these question marks, by the way, to give you some clues. Scaling limit indicates how many cloudlets can the system automatically scale up to. So lower and higher limits, which basically gives a range of memory and CPU available to that individual node. And you can set this for every single node within the actual environment you're setting up. Now, simple thing is, if I uh, grab that um, with my mouse, grab that slider button and move it one way, I can increase the number of cloudlets, I can decrease the number of cloudlets and so on. So you can either type the numbers in those boxes, use the slider controls, whatever. But in doing that, I'm actually indicating um, an, an upper and a lower limit in terms of the amount of system resource I'm going to allocate to this particular uh, environment. So this is um, set up initially with a single uh, MariaDB uh, node. I want more than that. I want I want at least two. Okay. I want to cluster them. So I'm going to hit that button, clustering on. And now automatically the system has already added a proxy SQL. So this is a proxy to enable but if you like that work -like balancing between those two database engines, as it were. Now I can implement this in a couple of different ways. Uh, primary secondary, primary primary. And if I just hover over those, you get a little um, uh, schematic there just showing you what the actual, uh, if you like, architectural setup is. Uh, primary, secondary, and also Galera. If I go with Galera, I'm going to need three nodes uh, because of the way that Galera works. Uh, but again, if you're familiar with that, all of those different term technique, uh, topologies are available. Let's go with primary, primary. I'm just going to knock that down to two. Primary, primary. That is good. So a few more parameters there. We're not going to go into those. One of the interesting areas is over here on the right-hand side. When we talked about multi-cloud earlier, this is where we can select where this um, MariaDB environment will be um, created. Um, now, this is a demo system, and here this is a multi-cloud environment or demo environment we have. So we just got clouds in here. Now, I said earlier during the presentation, we can deploy bare metal, IaaS platforms, essentially IaaS here. We can deploy VMware, deploy to many, many different areas. So I'm just going to choose the first one, Volta. Um, but the point is, is that you can add whatever locations, whatever clouds, whatever regions you want in terms of the VAP setup. So it, you might only have one particular um, you know, hyperscaler. You might have others of VMware, others on-premise, KVM opens are absolutely fine. You can do all of that. And that is what VAP will actually work with. It will work with whatever cloud platforms you tell it you want it to work with. So we're just going to keep with Vulture now, just by way of an example. And uh, down here, I am just going to set the environment name. So I am going to call this one MariaDB. Whoops, I can't spell MariaDB. Cluster um, demo. Cluster demo. There we go. And I'm going to hit create. There's a bit more information there about resources and about costings and so on. We're going to just ignore that for the time being because that is uh, can be subject to a completely separate, uh, quite a long discussion. I'm going to hit create. And so what we've actually done is defined an environment with a MariaDB cluster running a primary primary. Uh, the system automatically included the proxy SQL, so it's going to take just a little bit of time creating that. Uh, bottom left, you can see on uh, my screen, it says five active tasks. If I, if I click on that and open that window, it'll just give me a running commentary about all the tasks that are going on right now. So, you know, number of activities, so you can just watch what it's doing in the background, or not as the case may be, I'll just collapse that down. Now, um, in terms of his one I created earlier, the first one, MariaDB cluster 01, this is basically one I created earlier, so it's already established. 
because um, it'll take a few minutes for that um, um, ReadDB environment to be established. Here, I'm just opening this up, and you can see the individual components within this particular cluster. We've got our MariaDB cluster. This is configured in the primary secondary uh, topology. And then we've got our two uh, proxy nodes as well that's actually managing the workload between those two um, um, MariaDB nodes as well. Now, as I'm moving my cursor onto those, you can see the number of icons that become available here. Um, if I click on the first one, for example, open in browser, um, it automatically just loads PHP my admin. Now, when you create an environment, you get sent emails for all the login credentials. So I'm not going to go down that route. I'm just going to show you the mechanics of how we actually interact with this. Um, so that is the first one. Now, interestingly, we've got this feature called add-ons here. And once your database is established, I can click on add-ons and I can add additional capabilities, additional services into my uh, database environment if I so choose. Now, here I'm just going to move my window me out of the way. Um, we can add in, for example, some some di or we can run some diagnostics. We can uh, get into database cluster recovery, so we can add these things in. So, for example, database backup restore add-on is a common one that people use. If I click on install, and this is a database backup restoration add-on. I can add in, so it's a simple scheduler. Okay. Um, what am I going to add in, or, or in terms of the schedule? I'm going to do hourly, daily, whatever. Uh, backup storage, so when you specify backup storage, I don't have any storage here. So you identify your backup storage, question marks there, so you can actually hover over that and get information, how many backups, my database user, it's auto-populated it with my own credentials and so on, but this is environment name, because I specify the add-on relative to the database that was already created. So I could go ahead, I can only specify um, backup storage there, so I don't have that uh, available at the moment. But then I'll just click install, and then that is an add-on service to my database environment. The point of me showing you this is that it's very easy to set up an environment um, with these tools, and it helps you manage it a bit better, more efficiently, and so on. Now, you might have other ways that you want to manage it, and that's absolutely fine. These are there, optional. You can use them if you wish. Okay, so a few other options, but that is what we call add-ons. So these are the elements that we can, if you will, uh, build upon your uh, management capabilities within this VAP suite. We can get down, we can uh, restart the nodes for whatever reason, it might have stopped, we want to restart it, uh, we get into the config information um, details. So this opens up um, basically uh, a list of, if you will, directories, files relative to that specific node. So we can have a look at some of these, custom, um, CNF, config files, and so on, and have a look at some of these. Okay, so we're getting a lot of access to uh, tailor, tweak, interact with, and so on. We can have a look at a load of log files, fine. Um, we can also have a look at stats. Now, stats is an interesting one. I'm just too far to go a little bit larger. Um, so, stats will give us uh, metrics about the resource consumption. I mean, you can see all of these different windows here. Uh, you can see that something has been created, my environment's been created by the message top right. That's great. Uh, CPU usage, RAM, disk, and network. Um, so it gives us immediate information about what resources I'm consuming, and it also will store these over a period of time. Now, that environment has only recently been created, so I'm not going to go back, you know, days and weeks, but you can, and it will store those metrics for you. So you've got access to metrics uh, pretty easily here as well. Okay, now um, a couple of other areas. Um, this is uh, my existing, I'm just going to uh, minimize that as my new cluster because I'm halfway through talking. Um, I can access uh, Web SSH. I can go into uh, that particular option and it will just uh, drop me down into that individual node and um, you know I'll get a command line prompt. So I've not even created a database there, but you know all of the um, if you like framework is ready for me to start interacting with, you know, building out and interacting with that database and so on. Okay, uh, what else have we got? We can uh, redeploy the container. Uh, so that is a system container because we we basically capture everything in what we call system containers, um, and we can get into um, some more specific information: direct SSH, reset password info. We can even delete as well. Now. Um, that just gives you a bit of an idea about how we can interact with a specific cluster. Now, I'm going to have a look at the one that we created. 
because it's actually very, very similar to this, but this is the one that you saw me create. This just shows that it's actually there, and this is the one that's in primary, primary. Um, we've got a message top right. Uh, if there's any problems with the deployment, you'll also get messages top right as well. So I'm just going to hit that X just to make that go away. And here, again, we can actually have a look at this. Now, you can go in and you can change any of these things, any of these settings as well. If I go up to the top level, which is the stack, MariaDB cluster demo, and I hit on this settings um, icon, it opens up this sub-menu here. And I can go in and um, uh, define define settings, uh, change points, and so on, all relating to that uh, uh, MariaDB environment. Um, set up custom SSLs, SSH access, it's another route into, uh, SSH into that particular node. Uh, we can set up endpoints, uh, and again, limited time, I don't have time to go through all of these. One of the areas I did want to talk about was about horizontal scaling. So, I've talked about the cloud alerts when we were building a new environment, and about how the system can flex between the upper and the lower limits in terms of cloud alerts, the RAM and the CPU and so on. With horizontal scaling, we can actually take that to another level as well. So with this, we can define triggers upon which the system will scale horizontally. If you think about sort of CPU, RAM, more of a vertical kind of a measure there, and here we're actually doing horizontal scaling. Um, I just need to, from this menu, I need to select, so is it a SQL databases or proxy I'm going to uh, refer to. Um, to enable it, I have to click these boxes, have nodes remove nodes, and right now by default, the CPU is actually set. So what this is basically saying is, when the CPU loading, my SQL databases reaches more than 80%, you can change that. For a time period, for at least five minutes, you can change that, scale out to three nodes. If I've got two nodes, it will add another node. And you can change that, you can keep on going. How many nodes do you want? Three, four, five, doesn't matter. You can just keep on scaling them out. Now, obviously, databases in primary, secondary, we're gonna end up with more secondaries. And, and so on. So obviously you need to pay attention to how the topology will be actually used and operated. But this is a principle which applies to anything, to the proxy SQL elements, if you had some you know, Apache servers in there, the servers, etc., etc. The point about this is that this is, you can consider this a set and forget type mechanism where you can set the trigger and it will automatically add and spin up another node. And it's all about easing the management burden of yourself and having the system become or operate quite autonomously. Now you don't have to do this, and this might be applicable for some particular workloads and not others, but this capability is inbuilt. So as well as being able to add nodes, when for example CPU reaches a certain level, or we could do memory or network, disk IO, we also remove nodes as well. So when the resource consumption goes down to a certain level, we don't need those extra nodes, they're consuming you know, some resource, let's just remove them. Okay, um, obviously whatever the, the app, the database is, has got to be able to cope with that, but that is a mechanism which is really interesting. Um, so we have both uh, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling as a core part of this engine, if you will, of this platform that we can run the MariaDB environment on. So um, I'm just going to minimize that. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole heap of other um, areas, you know, we talked about migrations and uh, exports, so we can actually migrate database, in this instance Maria database, and we're going to migrate it from to somewhere else, okay, you can do that depending on whatever regions are there, uh, we can export and so on, so I'm not exporting environments, so I can export environments uh, to be able to move that, you know, it's, 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 a separate, um, it's a separate process to go through. Not got time to go through all of these yet, because I wanted to come back to the way that we can help you provision databases but specifically across multiple clouds. Now this one, I've deployed the Pulter, uh, MariaDB cluster, and it's all been set up. I'm gonna have a look in the marketplace now. This is a different way that we offer part of this um, solution where we can uh, give you the tools to be able to provision quite a complex environment within just a couple of mouse clicks, literally. Uh, I just clicked some applications there. There's a whole heap of applications. So we curate all of these. Um, I'm just scrolling through a couple of pages now. And we can go to clusters. This is where we've got MariaDB, whoops, MariaDB multi-region cluster, and this is a multi-region Glera cluster. I'm just going to stick with multi-region cluster um, for now. And we hit that install button, and it comes up with this um, dialog. Now, it's asked me just a couple of questions, and then it'll go off and do its, uh, um, do its work. What regions am I going to deploy into? So 
you remember I talked about clouds and regions? Now in here, I've got a number of different ones. I've already selected Vulture, AWS, GCP. Um, obviously there it is, we've got Adobe, we've got um, you know, Azure as well. But let's just stick with AWS and GCP, just because they're there. Great. So the M3 database version, let's stick with the version 11. And then environment, I'm going to give it a name. So Maria DB, excuse me, this is going to be Maria DB cluster demo MR, MR for multi region. Okay, and then install. Oh, okay, so I just chose that option there. It's a MariaDB database that's going to be installed as a cluster across multiple regions. All right, so I've got an error message at the uh, at the top of the screen saying it doesn't have free hardware in a particular uh, region. That's okay. It will deploy however much it can, actually, depending on availability of resource. Now, I'll just minimize that and close the marketplace, and you'll actually see a lot of things being installed now. Those two elements in the middle, which are highlighted, they're the ones that I've already created. Everything else is getting installed separately. So we've got, for example, uh, at the top, database multi-region topology is kind of grayed out at the minute because it's still installing. That's on Vulture. And then the next one is what's this? AWS, because we're looking at the tags. So that indicates where we're actually deploying this. Um, so obviously the um, uh, what was the other one? GCP was enough system resource there to install it. But you can hopefully see that this method allows us to install MariaDB database across multiple clouds and have that cluster spanning those clouds. And when these are all complete, and this will take probably 15, 20 minutes, so we don't have time during this demo to wait for it to complete. But when it does finish, uh, we can interact with it in exactly the same way that we're interacting with our other MariaDB environments. So we, we can uh, go and set a horizontal scaling, uh, sort out the access, change collaboration, change owner, and so on and so forth. We can also get into um, all of those add-ins. Remember, I talked about the add-ins with the uh, the backup, um, restore add-on, the cluster recovery, running diagnostics, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, what I'm showing you here is an environment that we have, a virtualized application platform. Uh, it's just actually uh, yeah, deploying a lot more now. Um, that gives you uh, the ability to uh, deploy and manage MariaDB environments, we think a lot easier than having to do everything by hand, having to code everything and do everything methodically step by step. So this is a set of tools which we believe make it a lot easier, make your life easier to be able to go and deploy all of these. Actually, this went through a lot quicker than I was expecting, so that is great. So now we've got... Um, I'm just going to minimize these so we can actually see on the screen now. Um, so what we've got is um, primary, primary uh, in Vulture and in AWS, and then the proxy SQL in Vulture and AWS as well. So we've got the proxy SQL there. So that's actually been a successful deployment across two, so it's clustering across two specific clouds in Vulture and AWS, which is quite something. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea about the capability of this platform in supporting the MariaDB deployments. Now with that, I'm going to um, drop back into this particular um, slide here, because uh, that is the end of the demo. And hopefully that has been of, um, of interest to you and will spark some you know, thought and debate and so on. If you want to know more, um, you can scan this QR code, you can uh, contact us at info at or you can you know, contact me directly, it's not a problem, Paul Brunier, uh, paul.brunier at virtuoso.com. And uh, I want to thank you very much for your attention and your time with this, and I hope to hear from you soon. And I think hopefully we've got enough time.